in the teachings of the Most High Elijah Muhammad, we are taught how what is known as shriners came into existence. The Most High Elijah Muhammad, in our lessons, we are asked this question. Why does Muhammad make the devil study from 35 to 50 years before he can call himself a Muslim son, which is a mason or a shrine? He says, and wear the greatest and only flag of the universe, he must add a sword on the upper part of it, of the holy and greatest flag of Islam. The Mullah Elijah Muhammad said that this practice of allowing them to study started right after the time of Prophet Muhammad. Now, if that's the case, where's the research to back that up? Here's a book written by the, it's saying here, when you see the book, it says, the ancient Arabic order of nobles of the mystic shrine was instituted by who? Muhammadan. They said the Caliph al his name praised the son-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad in the year of the Hijra, 25 AD, at Mecca, Arabia. They're saying that he started this, but look at what it says. William J. Florence, the guy that you see to your right, while on a visit to Arabia was initiated into the temple of the mystic shrine in that country and the secret work of the order was brought by him to the United States in year 1871 and it was placed in the hands of Dr. Fleming. Which means that this guy on your right, he went to Arabia, got sworn into these sacred shrines to become a shriner or a mason and he brought it to America yes. and that's what started. Yes, sir. Mm. But it's, a, it's members of the original people giving white folks the opportunity to study, and they studied in secret. Is that yeah. not what the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad yeah. said? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad went further to say this, and we're going to go into what does all of this mean. If you've been to a parade, you've probably seen these little white men on the little scooters right. and all this stuff wearing these fences. Yes, sir. With a black man at the head of the fence. That's right. Look at that. Mm. Now, they were wearing this past the 60s when you had Jim Crow laws and all of this stuff. Ask yourself the question, what would make these people who were fighting and lynching black folks and fighting to upkeep uh, se segregation, that in their secret, they'll put on a fast that has a face of a black man above their head? Come on. What do they know? Come on. What we know? And how did what they know make them how did what they know make them want to resist black folks getting freedom, justice, and equality, right? So listen. Listen to what the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, which the ghetto scholar never quotes. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Watch out. This is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The minister informed the crowd that white masons and shriners study black people, and they know the true history of the master architect known as Hiram. Here you see J. Edgar Hoover who fought to destroy and kill black leaders. Yes, sir. Who brags about causing the friction between the Nation of Islam and Malcolm X. Right, that's him. Who framed Marcus Garvey and had him uh, put in jail and he was sent out from back to Jamaica from New Orleans. Yes, sir. This is the guy who sent had a letter sent to Dr. King telling him to commit suicide or we're going to let your wife know about your extramarital affairs. But in the secret, he's studying about your and my history as black people. Go ahead. This is the man who told, he told his, his staff that we want to prevent the rise of a black messiah. Why did he say that? Because they know our history and we don't know ourselves. Yes, you saw the movie Get Out, right? Yes, sir. Remember in Get Out when, when they brought the guy, the guy, he, he, the, the brother who had the hat, the one who the dude flashed the camera in his face? Yes, yes. Right? Yes, sir. But remember when the, 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 the main character, the black dude, when he came into the party, if you go back, he's introducing himself to everybody. Yes, sir. That movie had a lot of symbolism oh, yes. in it. And as he introduced himself to all of these white people, they kept telling them, no, we know who you are. Oh, no, we heard all about you. And what it's showing is that they know all about us, but as you said, we don't know about ourselves. So those who are in these Shriner Lodges, they know about us. They know how we are the Hiram and the Biff, the great architect. A great architect means he's the master builder. 
But what did he build? Was he talking about just building a building? He's the master architect. He's the master designer, right? So listen to what the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said about this. He said, these same strangers talking to the black masons and black people, they take your own wisdom of Allah and the knowledge of his temple, which Solomon, your own black brother Muslim, gave you as a warning. They sell it to you after diluting and changing his name from Islam, freedom, justice, and equality to Freemason. But it is not Freemasonry here. It is free by masonry. They change the name from Muslim to Mason, and none must be called Muslim under the Masonic law until he pays a great sum of money for the 33rd degree. What will be the price for the 360 degree, which is the whole circle? So blacks go into these Eastern stars and become Masons, and they learn the symbols. Yeah. But I think with the age of the internet now, how the minister has been talking about it and other people have been talking about the rituals, some of them are now starting to understand that, man, this is really about us. That's right. yeah. But they learn the symbols, but they are not learning what white masons and white shriners are learning. Come on. So when we go further, the Mosaic Elijah Muhammad says, you don't need to join masonry to be a Muslim. It is free, and why would you buy that with that or spend money for that which brings you no gain? Come on. Regardless to how high you go in masonry, you are still a Negro. Oh. You are not treated as the equal to the white masons. That's right. But if you accept Islam, you are forcing all to recognize you. Yes, that's right. Jesus. Many of these police and judges who are denying black folks the right to eat at a counter were masons. But if this is supposed to bring a great brotherhood, how do you deny equality to somebody who's supposed to be your brother? They do it because they're like, yeah, you're a black mason, but you are not like us. So the minister said that that's why they didn't integrate. He said that's why they didn't integrate the shrines. That's right. Right? We go further. Here we go. He says, if you come and follow me, Elijah Muhammad, I will give you the meaning of all those degrees and your ritual. Come on. I will show you that it is only a history of you and the fall of you among them. <laughs> that is all. I will prove it. You must be directed to, the, to look eastward again towards your people. Mm. So they say, Elijah Muhammad was a mason. And the Muslim Elijah Muhammad did say he was a mason. But he never said that what he got that has given life to black people came from masonry. Right. And to those who try to say that, I would ask you this. Prior to the Muslim Elijah Muhammad meeting his teacher, Master Farah Muhammad, he says about his own condition that he was covered in the dirt of this world That's up into his eyeballs. Right. So how come masonry was not good enough to get him to put Go the on. bottle down? How come masonry did not prevent him from being so drunk one time that his family found him laid bare on a track, right. on a train track? when his wife and his children had to come and get him. This is why the Mosaic Elijah Muhammad says in his statement, he says that you spend money for that which brings you no gain. Like I've been there, I've studied that, and it didn't transform me from being a so-called Negro. 